In question 26, a block of mass m is pushed with a velocity u towards a movable wedge of mass nm and height h as shown. All the surfaces are smooth. The minimum value of u for which the block will reach top of the wedge is. Dear student, let the velocity of the system when the block reaches the top of the incline be v. So we can use the conservation of linear momentum and write down that mu will be equal to m plus nm into v which means that v will be equal to mu by m plus nm or u by 1 plus n. Now using the conservation of energy we can write down that half mu square is equal to mgh plus half m 1 plus n that is the total mass multiplied by v square. From this if we substitute the value of v as u by 1 plus n we can write down that u square is equal to 2gh plus u square by 1 plus n and on solving we will get a value of u to be equal to under root 2gh 1 plus 1 by n and hence for this question the correct answer turns out to be option number 3. Now moving on to the question number 27. Question 27 says a ball is thrown vertically upwards from ground with a velocity 10 meter per second. It returns to the ground with a velocity of 9 meter per second then the maximum height attained by the ball is nearly. The air resistance is assumed to be constant and g is 10 meter per second square. The student the initial kinetic energy that is ki can be written as half into m into initial speed square. So this will be equal to 50 into m joules. The final kinetic energy will be half m into 9 square that will be equal to 40.5 m joules. So the loss of kinetic energy that is delta k will be equal to 9.5 m joules. Now the loss of energy in one way dear student will be equal to 4.75 m into j. So this is loss of energy in one way. Hence the energy of the ball at the highest point can be easily written as energy at highest point let us represent this by E will be equal to 50 minus 4.75 and this will be equal to 45.25 m into j. Now this will be equal to the potential energy so mgh will be equal to 45.25 and hence h will be equal to 45.25 divided by m into g. So this will be m is up here so m into g. So this will be equal to 4.525 meters and hence for this question the closest answer is option number 1. Now let us move to the question number 28. Question 28 says the position of a body of mass 2 kg as a function of time varies as x is equal to 2 t to the power 4 plus 5. The increase in kinetic energy of the body one second after the start of the motion is. The student the velocity is written as the differentiation of position so dx by dt so this will be equal to 8 t cube. Now the initial velocity is 0 the final velocity can be written as if we substitute the value 1 in the expression of v so this will be equal to 8 meter per second. The change in kinetic energy will be equal to half into mass 2 into velocity square 8 square minus initial velocity square 0 square. So this will be equal to 64 joules. And hence for this question the correct answer turns out to be option number 4. Now moving on to the question number 29. Question 29 says which of the following statement is wrong. So four statements are given to us. Kinetic energy of a body is independent of the direction of motion. This, student, this is a correct statement because kinetic energy is a scalar and it simply depends on the speed and not the direction. Second statement says in an elastic collision momentum and kinetic energy of each body remains constant. The student in question 29, in elastic collision the kinetic energy of the system is conserved initially and finally. However, for each body it may not be constant. Third option says if two masses come close to each other the potential energy of the system decreases. This is correct and the fourth option says the body can have energy without momentum. One of the examples is the gravitational potential energy which is due to the position of the particle and it is not dependent whether the particle is moving or stationary. And hence for this question the correct 
option is option 2 which is an incorrect statement and that is what we have to report therefore this is our final answer moving on to the question number 30 question 30 says if a ball is thrown up vertically up from the surface of earth then there are four options that are given to us the earth remains stationary while the ball moves up the ball remains stationary while the earth moves downwards the ball and earth move towards each other the ball and earth move away from each other dear student as per the conservation of momentum the ball and the earth will both move away from each other however the velocity or the displacement of earth is negligible and hence we can only observe the ball in this case therefore for this question the correct answer is option number four moving on to the question number 31 